Greetings, you all. Hope you all doing good. This is going to be the third video about the pickups I've amassed since 2020 started. Most of these are I've been purchasing online, eBay, Discogs, Bandcamp, Deep Discount. Uh, one or two times I've been able to pick something up at a store curbside. Um, as I record this, it's August and record stores are all kind of opening up again so but i haven't had the chance to go to one yet uh, and peruse the aisles and the shelves but hopefully i'll be able to do that soon anyway so let's get started see what else i've picked up this year first up we have be your own pet get awkward this is actually a promo version i got because it's in a jewel case i think the actual release of this is a digi pack and you know, I mean, I know some people have issues with digipacks. I sometimes do. If, if there's a choice between a jewel case and a digipack, I'll take the jewel case. I know it's not environmentally friendly like the digipack sort of is, but whatever. I used to like get when I'd go see a show, a band in concert, and I have the ticket, the leftover ticket stub as a kind of souvenir. I used to like popping these open and I'd put the ticket inside here. Um, that's probably why I kind of always like jewel cases. This came out in 2008 and the band split up after this record. So I don't think I'll be seeing them. There's no need for me to be putting any thinking. I'm going to be putting a ticket anywhere in there. I had their first, uh, record self-titled. I think, I think originally I got it from a friend of mine. I mentioned it before a friend of mine, when I worked at Broadway video, used to bring in tons of music to share. And I think that's where I first heard this band. And I picked up their uh, self-titled CD. And I, I, there were like one or two songs I really liked. And then a few years ago, maybe two years ago, I popped it in and said, ah, you know, let me give that another listen. And, then, and it grew on me. This time I liked it a lot more than I had originally. Um, so, you know, a few, maybe a month, two months ago, when I was just thinking, bored and thinking of you know, different bands that I liked and had never really dug any deeper in. These guys crossed my mind. And so I uh, went looking to see what else, you know, I didn't even know if they still were together or anything. And this was their second release. So I was like, ah, let me just grab it and see how it is. And it's pretty good. I haven't listened to it a ton. A couple of the tunes already I really kind of like on here. Um, but good band. The lead singer, she went on... She released one solo. I think Thurston Moore from Sonic Youth kind of had an interest in this band and signed them. I think this might be his uh, record label, Ecstatics, Ecstatic Peace. I think that might be his record label, but I, he did some stuff with her and she put out a solo record. Actually, right before I started recording this, I went to look at her uh, solo record and I found it kind of cheap. I think I'm going to pick it up just out of curiosity. Next up we have Bow Wow Wow. Sea Jungle, Sea Jungle. Go join your gang. Yeah. S what the heck? City all over. Go Ape Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Long ass title. Sea Jungle, Sea Jungle, I guess is what people, most people refer to this as. Um, this album cover, not this one that I have on CD, but the original album cover of this got, caused a bit of a controversy because uh, Annabelle, uh, the lead singer at the time, was like 14. And I guess she posed nude. She wasn't nude. She had like her back to the camera, but, you know, covering up and everything. But it caused a bit of a uh, controversy when it came out. And uh, this is a re-release by One Way Records. Um, this album originally came out in 1981. I told a story, I think, during the my vinyl B uh, episode, uh, Bow Wow Wow. I didn't, other than I Want Candy, I didn't really know anything about them. I picked up a Best Of CD for like 96 cents at McKay's a few years ago and listened to it and really found the band very impressive. I really liked the songs. Cherry Red, I think, put out a, like a complete set, maybe three discs, something like that, of the whole, like their whole output. And I, when I was looking for this, I came across that and kind of debated which one I should pick up. And I might have been smart to pick that set up because you'd have everything on CD. Uh, but I went with this. I kind of, something about having like the individual records I kind of like. Some of the stuff is on the best of CD that I have. I'm a TV Savage is a good tune. Golly Golly Go Buddy, Go Wild in the Country. Like I said, there's still a couple little things that uh, 
I probably need to pick up from them. Had I picked up the Cherry Red set, I wouldn't have to, but you know, we're checking out if you like New Wave, Bow Wow Wow, Sea Jungle, Sea Jungle, etc., etc. Next up, I got some vinyl, finally, some new vinyl, right? I mean, I've done two of these already and I've had no new vinyl yet, but picked up a little bit. I don't dig up too much new vinyl these days unless I find some used stuff that's really cheap. Um, but this I picked up, it was on sale. This is Do It by Chapo. This came out in 2018. Um, I got this uh, from Deep Discount and it was on sale. I, I want to say it was like five bucks like uh, to get the vinyl. They must have had a bunch of these in the warehouse and wanted to get rid of them. So I grabbed this five bucks. I was like, sure, why not? And I think when this came out, I heard whatever the lead track was. And I wasn't that crazy about it because I had some of their previous work that I liked. And I wasn't too crazy about what I heard, so I just kind of skipped it. After their last record, they kind of took a bit of a hiatus, and unfortunately there were some deaths. Some of the band members kind of experienced some close people to them pass away, and I guess maybe it didn't look like the band was going to reconvene, but uh, they did, and they put out this record, and it's really a good record. I have listened to this a couple of times and I really like what I'm hearing, but again, uh, some of these tracks, I cannot tell you which tracks are the ones that I like. I don't know the names of them because I just put it on and I haven't been like double checking like, oh, this is really cool. What's the name of it? I tried to do that as much as I can, but uh, because I used to hand pick which ones to put on like my iPhone or whatever. Um, but lately I've just been dumping everything on there and just listening. So, uh, and this came with, you know, like the, uh, digital code to get the tracks. So I was able to put it on my iPhone, but, uh, really good record. I like these guys a lot. You know, I wish I had the chance to see them live. If we're ever able to go see live shows again, I think, and if they're doing a show, I think I would definitely check it out. Now we have... His greatest hits, Jim Croce, Photographs and Memories. This came out in 74, a year after he passed away, tragically. Uh, quite a bit of output before he died. Um, I think he, they, I think maybe he only put out, I think maybe three records, and I think one of them came out after he died as well. This has got, you know, Bad Bad Leroy Brown, Great, great tune. One of my favorite songs, Time in a Bottle, New York's Not My Home, I Got a Name, Don't Mess Around with Jim. You know, it's kind of that 70s mellow kind of, I guess, kind of folk pop. Um, really good. I, I got this at deep discount at the same time as I bought the, uh, the Chapo vinyl. I picked this up, same thing. I think it was $5 or something, and I got it brand new. Jim Croce, Greatest Hits, great CD, you know. Cool, cool tunes. Good singer. Now we have from 1986, the soundtrack to the motion picture, Academy Award nominated motion picture, Crocodile Dundee. Yep, you heard that right. It had an Academy Award nomination for best screenplay. I don't know, maybe there was another one, but I know the uh, screenplay was nominated for uh, an Oscar. Didn't win, so don't, no need to look it up. Uh, this was, I worked at a movie theater and we had this. I like this movie. I still, I watched it maybe a year ago. I think it holds up. I mean, sure, there's some stuff maybe that wouldn't fly now. Uh, but, but on a whole, it's still, the first one still holds up. I think it's still kind of a fun movie, you know, fish out of water thing. And, and he's really good in it. And uh, so is uh, the actress, uh, Linda Kozlowski. The theme is what made me want to pick this up. Because the theme, it almost reminds me a little bit of this kind of like surf music, instrumental. Um, it reminded me a lot of this band, The Sandals, uh, who did the soundtrack to The Endless Summer. And uh, it, it reminded me of that. And I kind of just, I, and I kind of made, made me think, oh yeah, you know, the music in that's pretty decent, you know? And so I decided to pick it up. It wasn't cheap. Uh, turned out, like this is one of those things that you think, cry out any soundtrack, like who's gonna want that? I'll probably be able to get that for like $2. And then you go look and it's like people are selling it for like $25, $30 and stuff. And you're like, holy crap. Uh, but so I guess it's kind of rare. Maybe uh, it's I'm sure it's out of print. I'm sure it's, you know, one of those things that maybe there aren't a ton of these. But uh came out in 86. Uh, the composer is Peter Best. Not the Peter Best you're thinking of from the Beatles, but a different Peter Best. 
I don't know if he's Australian. My guess is he probably is. Um, but, you know, I, I've listened to this once or twice, and uh, it's all right. I mean, the theme song is really what I like about this. So, so I was saying they're very expensive. You look on eBay and stuff. And even when I got this and posted a picture of this CD club that I got it, somebody was like, oh, man, where did you find that? I've been trying to track it down. Um, but I think I got this uh, either on eBay or Discogs. But I think I paid like 15 to $20 for it. Um, and so it wasn't cheap, uh, but but that was a good price considering what other people are selling this for. Uh, but, you know, the theme's really good on this. I really like the theme. The rest of it is is okay. Uh, nothing else really stood out to me, but, you know, it's still kind of cool to have this Crocodile Dundee soundtrack. Next up, I've got two releases from the band Dentist. I talked about them in one of my previous Pickup 2020 uh, episodes. And I really got into them early this year. I saw a couple of clips of them playing, um, and I liked the songs, and I picked up their one album, the one CD, and I listened to that, and I liked it a lot, so I decided to pick up the other uh, CDs that they had, the first of which is Dentist, the self-titled. This came out in 2014. Uh, Good Eye Records. It's the one thing that sucks is it's just in this card sleeve. I hate this. Uh, I wish it was in at the very least put it in a digi pack. Uh, I bought this directly from the band's Bandcamp page. It came in a, like a little package with um, a button or maybe a button or two and some stickers and stuff like that. It was a nice little package, maybe ten bucks. And Bandcamp's been running these. Um, promotions during the pandemic where I, it's certain Fridays where they give a hundred percent of the profits go to the band. So they take nothing. So that's kind of cool thing. If you want to pick some stuff up from band camp, maybe do it on that day. So the band gets the lion's share since none of them can really play shows anymore or anything. But, uh, I like this band a lot. They're kind of this dreamy pop. They, they consider themselves sort of surf pop, really good tunes on here. No matter is really good bird in a cage. Uh, I do it because I want to, I like, and a, a lot, of, I've, I've liked pretty much everything I've heard from them. Again, like I was saying earlier about the Chapo record, I, some of the names of the songs aren't sticking in my head, but I know the song, I really like it. And the other record I picked up by them is only available digitally, it's called Ceilings. I think it was their second record, I think it came out after the self-titled one. And that one too, I really like a lot, I bought that off of uh, Bandcamp as well. Same thing, more great tunes. I'll put their link to their band camp below if you want to help them out, pick up some of their music, check them out. Good band if you like that kind of surf, punk, uh, kind of pop, dream pop sort of stuff. Wor worth checking out, Dentist. And now we have Dramarama, Color TV. I think I might have mentioned them before. This was originally released May 1st digitally, and I bought it that day because uh, I'm such a fan of this band and have been for ages. When they released this physically as a physical uh, CD, they initially, you couldn't buy it like Amazon or anything like that. Initially, they it was only available in these certain indie record stores. Um, Freak, I know Freak Beat had it for sale and then Jax also had it for sale. And I contacted Jax and set up a transaction and paid for it and everything and was able to just pull up curbside and get the CD from them. Uh, so it's really good. It's in this digi pack. Um, you know, I, I like, I wish they had a little bit more to it, but certainly understand this is the way to go these days. This is the first record they've put out in years. And I mean, this sounds like something from their heyday. You know, it's, uh, it sounds exactly like something you would have expected them to put out in 90, whatever. And that's not, I'm not saying that in a negative way, like it sounds dated or anything. It just, it just sounds like exactly how you want them to sound. And the songs are just great. And, you know, John Easdale's always been a fantastic songwriter and just come up with a whole another batch of great tunes. There's a couple of songs on here that have been floating around for a while. Uh, the song Every Day, he's been, I've seen him playing that live since mid nineties, at least. It's, it's good here, the recording of it. I think I've heard him do it live a little bit better, but it's, it's not bad. It's only money and What's Your Sign have been around for a while. Uh, Beneath the Zenith that kicks off this album is just, it's like the perfect way to just kind of like announce a new Dramarama record, man. It just like 
boom. And it's just like, here we go. You know, it's fucking awesome. But, um, great, great album. Uh, I, it might be a little difficult finding this if you're looking for it physically. Um, I can't imagine there are a ton that they made tons and tons of these, but, uh, but it's, you can get it digitally, no problem. A great, great record if you're a fan of Drama Rama. Now we have Pete and the Pirates, Little Death. Hope you're not getting a glare off of that. Uh, this record came out in 2008, I think. I first became aware of this band. Uh, their video, Mr. Understanding, was on this show called New York Noise. I talked about it before. It was a great music video show. It was on like once a week, late at night, and I would record it every week and then watch it back and, you know, always introducing me to new music like Pete and the Pirates. Just for some reason, never picked up this album. I always, it was always like kind of on my radar to pick it up, but I, oh, it always seemed like it maybe was too expensive. Like I wasn't sure if I wanted to spend that much. And then just recently, I just was like, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm buying this record and I got it. And it's pretty good. I haven't listened to it a ton. Mr. Understanding, like I've mentioned, is awesome. She Doesn't Belong to Me is really good. Some of the other songs that, that haven't really sunk in yet. You guys read everything, all the liner notes and everything. Like, I don't think I used to as much. And like lately, I've been really trying to be, make a point of, of, you know, digging in and reading everything that they have in the little CD booklet or on the liner notes in the album and everything. I, I don't know why when I was younger, I don't know that I read, paid too much attention to all that stuff, but I'm always impressed when I see other people's videos or people talking on a podcast or something and they know like, you know, where it was recorded or the producer and all that. And I'm always kind of like fascinated that they you know, learned all that stuff. And, you know, it's all right there for you to learn. It's just got to take the time to read it, you know. And finally, another digital release by Shriekback, Waiting at the Wire. I saw this notice uh, on Facebook, I think, by Shriekback that they were putting out a digital release, like seven bucks. It was all sort of outtakes and remixes and jams, whatever. Uh, from the 83 to 84, you know, they were digging through the vaults, you know, just like us, they were bored sitting at home and they kind of decided to go digging through the vaults, see what was there, put this little compilation together called Waiting at the Wire uh, from of stuff from 83 and 84 and put it out there for fans to buy. It's pretty good price, seven bucks. Uh, I think I bought it directly from their website. Um, and, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. I haven't dug too deep into it again. You know, I don't know that I've, I'm trying to catch up, so I haven't dug too deep and I've heard some stuff from it. And some guy had written like a comment, like, oh, this is like getting a brand new shriek back record in, you know, the eighties or something. So that's kind of what made me go, let me grab this thing. You know, if this, what this guy's saying. And, uh, you know, and so, you know, it, it's pretty good. It's kind of interesting. You know, there's some kind of soundscapey kind of stuff on there. Shriekback was a, kind of a new wave, kind of art, pop, rock, kind of alternative sounding band, you know. Uh, I really like their three record run of Oil and Gold and Big Night Music and Go Bang. Maybe some fans would disagree with me when I say that, but... Uh, Good band, you know, treat back. I'll put the link below there to their site, and you can see they've got a bunch of other things that they're kind of clearing out the vaults with, you know. So anyways, that's the latest of everything that I've been picking up so far in 2020. Uh, hopefully we'll be getting back into record stores soon so I can go digging through the vaults and to grab some stuff and add to the collection, you know. Hope you all staying safe and healthy. Please subscribe, like the video and all that stuff, and we'll see you next time.